first project was in the core, Jan explained. Um, my design proposal, I found a kind of a sloping uh, rock area that had many little nooks and crannies of different sizes for people to gather uh, in different amount, like different numbers of people. Um, and I kind of just uh, covered them appropriate, appropriately like to what I thought their use would best be. Um, I showed just kind of a 3D plan in a way um, and section. Uh, that project I was having fun. It was a really quick project and ended up just being kind of fun. Uh, the second project uh, I got a rooftop design in one corner of the north end and it was kind of a key position I watched over everybody, all the other people in the north end. So I wanted to kind of take advantage of that and do my duty and get kind of high up um, and look out over everyone. And uh, I had one wall kind of blocking my view of the city, the other side, and so I just rose up above that as well. and. Uh, that was kind of an interesting project because um, we had to look at where we were going to be in 10 years. And so I imagined myself married and uh, probably be an architect. And um, I don't know, it was just kind of interesting. I liked the way Jan kind of presented it and makes you kind of think ahead. And, uh, Lost a lot of weight, I see, on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, and then uh, a third project was more in depth. We had at least twice the time um, for this. So we, we started out with the classic junk model or found objects model. Um, he wanted us to get an idea of uh, form and not necessarily use, like uh, just play with the junk and see what comes out of it. And I, this was the funnest project for me. A lot of people struggled with it. like. And they love building regular models, and I, this is this is it for me. This is amazing. I love it. <laughs> uh, so I just kind of played with with junk and thought about like people are going to be coming. Um, main traffic from the north end is coming in here, and my main idea was this to uh, to attract people in. And so I made I found this on the side, and so <laughs> I had to I had to put it in there. That's my attention getter. Official name. Uh, so I had I had the idea of a butterfly. Like in Victoria, BC, um, I went into this. I guess it was a zoo, or no, it wasn't even a zoo. It was, there was a few animals around, but their main attraction was this huge butterfly uh, conservatory. And you just walk in there, and you're surrounded by butterflies, and you can touch them or whatever. And uh, it's just kind of no, like you're just, I don't know, I had a great feeling about it. I couldn't, can't really describe the feeling, but uh, I want to go back there, and I haven't, I haven't gone back yet. Um, but anyway, I wanted to capture that, uh, I want to bring nature into the North End. That was kind of the goal of the project, and uh, it, was, it was interesting, it was fun. Um, but I did get a chance to go, and during Thanksgiving I went down to New York, and just by chance I went to see a friend's dad's exhibit in the Museum of Natural History, and I saw this thing and it just said butterflies, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm doing a project on butterflies, so I might as well go check it out. And uh, it turned out to be exactly what I was doing. It's like, uh, there's just some images from it. Um, and it's exactly how I imagined it. So it was kind of cool just to see it. From this junk model, we moved into kind of uh, the block model. Um, I tried to be a little more realistic, and I, I've I kind of messed up. I don't know. I didn't translate it right. Basically, I was trying to tran. I like that one a lot better than this one, and I. It took me a little while to figure it out. It's just different uh, sizes and relationships between the the objects. Um, but like I really liked what was going on there, and I wasn't able to translate it into real, real form. So I kind of struggled with that a little bit. Yeah, this. Yeah. Um, 
you find yourself struggling to get back to some of the shit? Oh, yeah. It's... I, that, that was my biggest struggle. Like, I wanted to build that, basically. And... Um, Is it the uh, modules that you're, you're given for, for constructing that, or just the difficulty of having tools to build this? Yeah, I think... For some reason, the pre-made forms like were really easy to kind of you just kind of got what they stood for and put them in their appropriate place. And here you're making everything, and you can't really remake. I don't know. If I copied that exactly, it wouldn't be the same. So um, it's a lot about the texture as well. Um, I just really like that model, and I was having struggling to uh, put it into form. Uh, then we moved up to a eight-scale model. I, it's still up in studio um, in the hectic rush. I forgot it. Um, this is the newer eight-scale model, but that was my old eight-scale model. And then what we do is we cut a section of it. Um, well, it, it was similar to this. And we cut a section cut out of it and just take that chunk. I, I cut right here. And so this was, and you blew it up to quarter scale, and uh, I just kind of had fun with it. So from that, we went on to drawing, like, we just went straight to drawing sections and plans, and, uh, and then finally the big H scale model. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about what, what's going on here. Uh, people are going to be entering from um, the T-stop, and I kind of wanted to bring them in with a with a curve. I don't know. Uh, I wanted to bring them into my space, and so they they come in and they see immediately the butterfly uh, conservatory, and that interests them. And the ramp is kind of their way, of, like it kind of signals that that's the way to get to the conservatory. So they come up through, there's a library that um, on the second and third floor, it's kind of a smaller library, more focused on nature. There's already one library in the north end, so this one was just more, I don't know, animals, like if kids come and they want to learn more about the butterflies, where they come from, and you know, um, then this is a place just to Kind of, it's not a checkout library. It's just you sit, and read out on. There's a deck here where you can sit and look up through. Um, How does one get to that level? Which this second level, third floor plan? I see the stairs coming up. They seem to be passing by this one and going to the third. Yeah. Um, the second level is the ele this is just a direct kind of a path to the butterfly conservatory. So that's what people are going to see. And then if, if they've been here before and they actually want to go visit the library or they're done visiting, then they can take the elevator down to the second floor or the first floor. And then also there's kind of an IMAX style theater um, in the corner. The sun, south is this direction and this is a very difficult site because there's almost no natural sunlight. Everything's blocked. And I was, this is the perfect spot for a theater, which is dark. And you want it to be dark. You don't want, you don't want sun shining in necessarily. Um, so this ended up being a perfect spot for a theater, whereas the library was more open and um, sunny. How do you get to the, uh, this, um, the garden? What's the relationship of the garden to the path and the line? The garden is for people who have already gone up, and there's going to be a lot of tourists, you know, coming just to see the butterflies, and they're going to come do their thing and then leave. But uh, the garden is more for the locals to come and still enjoy the butterflies without, like, they can come in and see up through, and they can relax, read books, whatever, in the... Um, so you, you double back the way you came in, you go out that way. So it's, a so it's, not, a, it's not a sort of a, a well, cycle that you go, because yeah. you sort of indicate it's a kind of a journey yeah. that goes up and you go through it, but then you double back on that journey and go down again. Is that right? Yeah. 
you didn't want the journey to continue and go down into the garden. I'm just, I'm just curious as to why you that, make people come you back. You know what, I honestly did not, I never took it through to that point. Okay. But, what was your, what, what was the piece that you focused on the most in, in this design? What was, what was uh, the key issue what, for you? Well, the, obviously it was the, the actual structure of that. Um, that that was like my main focus because when when I blew it up, blew it up to quarter scale, it was it just made it that much more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I also focused on the theater. The library was kind of wasn't a primary focus, but uh -huh. just what do you see inside besides butterflies? Presumably the plants in here. Yes, plants and. Yeah. Places it's to sit? Is there anything like that? Or just or you walk around? Uh, it's it? just kind of a, it's a walk. It's not a sitting. The sitting is more for the under, underneath. underneath. Um, I, I kind of imagine it even well, before I visit here. Yeah. This is kind of a, this is a lot smaller than uh, what I would build. But uh -huh. it was, you just kind of go through and circle through. Because it's sort of a habitat for butterflies, right? Yeah. So they have to have their place to land and alight. Yeah. I kind of I try to represent it in a section. I I, okay. I didn't know how to really. I didn't want to put a lot of greenery, you know, and sure. I don't, I just don't like. So, the green the the glass floor then. Could you talk about that? Uh, mainly that was for the experience of the garden underneath. Um, for people to just kind of look up and have a cloud of butterflies above them and just, okay. it, just be able to appreciate it. Now, to what degree did you have program in mind when you developed the junk? What do you uh, found off we, we had a basic program of what kind of things we wanted uh -huh. in, in the space. And then we were told to forget that and play with so objects. As you, were sell, as you were developing that, did you have specific program in mind for the, each of the components? No. I, the only thing, I had this plane here, uh -huh. and then when I put that over, I was talking about, uh, well, I was either going to do a brewery or a butterfly. Um, those are my two main ideas. Yep. And uh, and then when once I put this plane here and I found this uh, refract, refract paper, refractal, what's it called? Refract, refractive paper. Um, I just kind of drooped it over there, and I was like, "Oh, this is perfect." And so then, then I decided on the butterflies and just how it, how it would work in the space. Well, what's, what I find interesting is about this design process because it's a it is a unique design process. Yeah. In that you, it starts with a compositional. Uh, process where you know, you've got pieces and you move them around together in relation to a, a context of form and you come up with an intriguing formal composition in and of itself. Yeah. Right? Which yeah. Is, it was just fascinating, fun, and extremely exciting. You can generate a very interesting form and freeze you of the constraints of all these different Yeah, it was... Yeah. Then the issue is to transfer, translate that into both a habitable and functioning place. Um, and uh, the challenge there is to analyze the model, the, the kinds of territories that have been made here, uh, to define what kind of activities, habitation, each of those territories yeah. most suggest. That's a that, that was kind of, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, the, um, um, a, couple of, a couple of things that sort of strike me, I don't know if you... Yeah, The pieces that strike me, um, one, <laughs> you're starting now to uh, add a recession. Okay. Uh, to, you, you're identifying, what, what I sense is an identification of uh, the main program elements. You know, the, the, the conservatory up high, seeking the sun, the theater you were describing brought around in the occupied place with least light, and the library being put off in the corner. Um, all, I think, you know, then, then 
and the park sliding underneath. All of which I think are quite fascinating locations. I don't think they have a difficult time with the disposition of form. The only piece I think is the trickiest is the, is the space underneath the conservatory. Okay. Um, in this particular climate, I think that's a, it, as a year-round uh, territory, it's a very difficult yeah. kind of space. But um, I think in terms of function, I, when one gets to, one, when one comes to this point, one should question you know, now what does climate and sun, etc., yeah. have to do with yes. habitation? And I think then you have to start to let, let yourself make modifications to address those kinds of issues. Um, and it may have been about trying to grab some of that exterior space and let it be semi interior, exterior, you know, you yeah. close it up and, and make it warm in the winter. And yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. But the one piece that I find is this movement pattern. Mm that's the most difficult. Yeah. And I think it would, um, one is getting to the, the one is getting to the conservatory and having to pass through places that in fact probably don't desire the sort of main rush of public activity. And right now what's happened is in making a public place, you've made every space somewhat equally public by allowing the circulation to flow. It. Um, uh, well, no, okay. So I think the hardest piece for me is the ramp finally mm -hmm. coming and one bypassing the, the library, the main desk of the library, scooting them up above it and run and asking people to walk through the library space and finally find the conservatory mm -hmm. because in many ways we're doing two things. We're violating the library and the library function and the ability to go off and concentrate there. Yeah. And two, we're asking people to wander through, wander very far away from the conservatory, and that may be their destination. We're asking them mm -hmm. to go somewhere else and get lost in the building, and then finally come around to find it. Uh -huh. That's very, very path, actually, yeah. very well, well, my basic reasoning for bringing it around, um, I kind of wanted to give a taste of what else was there, because uh, when you have something like this, uh, the tendency is just to come see that and you're done. Like it's uh, direct movement, and I kind of wanted to bring people through the space, give them an idea of just what else goes on there. Um, it's a wonderful notion. I think that that idea is a solid one. I think the execution of it okay. actually it hurts the actual spaces that you're trying to introduce. Them. Okay. Um, one is I think it'd be lovely to in this. In this procession of the ramps and stairs, to be able to reach a place where one could depart that ramp and go to a library, you know, yeah. or from that ramp see the activity of the library, but move past it, um, or continue on up to find the conservatory. That one, could, one could get to the conservatory fairly easily, and um, and could get to each of the levels with that main ramp. I think mm -hmm. this is the using the elevator's device to bring public to each of the territories in yeah. probably an unfortunate okay. mode of transfer, yeah. The, the vertical. Um, so those are the, those are the mm. two things for screen. The third piece, and then I'll be done, is the theater and mm. the notion of entrance to a theater. Um, in many ways, if one is, if the, if the stage becomes the place of focus, uh, the, the entire audience is watching. Um, some activity that's been presented. A very uncomfortable place for people to enter is onto that stage. Yeah, I guess I was kind of, well, generally thinking of just how, I don't know, the, the one theater that I go to is uh, Fenway. Um, and you come down the sides and enter in the front, and that's just kind of what I was used to. And the movie theater. But uh, this, is, this, is, this is the IMAX. Like, uh, it's going to. It's what what help, what helps is to get people yeah. up, up to the back, which is there's have also to do. yeah. There's and also uh, there you can is, enter on the second floor. That's well, right. Yeah. But if that if that place of coming into the second floor was part of your main lobby, you can go to that directly. Gotcha. Violating, so you can enter the space, observe it, get a sense of what's going on without disturbing the focus. So all of these issues have to do with the procession and the way one moves okay. through.
Mm. I had the same, I guess, um, my first or biggest reaction relates to the movement again. And I had some of the same thing, saying that it's so, sort of frustrating to see this up there and not knowing quite what the journey is going to take you because in fact you're you want to get there but you're moving against it you know you're sort of going in the opposite direction so the feeling of of allowing you to somehow have a wonderful journey that might eventually reveal this at different points and I, the glass floor is also a point at which you could actually look up into something so maybe the journey could take you past the floor of this thing if okay. you're going to look up Okay, rather than just saying that's a f you look down into it or you're going to look up to it, make the journey part of your, exp make the experience part of it. Okay. And then you arrived. And I agree with um, Alan that perhaps when you have those other spaces like a library which you want people to get to, I could imagine the libraries being of actually sort of butterflies, yeah. just samples and yeah. examples and a bit of history and all that sort of stuff, the, the labeling. Um, that's something that you almost, once you've seen these people, it's, you know, you can have this choice about do you see them first and then you find out more about them because you're interested, or do you find out something about them and then you see them. Oh, yeah. Now, whether you give the people a choice or whether you take them through a journey, I think it's something to be worth, worth thinking about. And the relationship then of that library and those spaces to this open space in the middle. And I totally agree. You've got a very hard sight. It's yeah. a dark, north-facing, space so maybe I don't know what you do in terms of trying to really bring light and people into that space because it's going to remain uninhabited quite a lot of the time. Yeah. Maybe a few months in the summer to get away from the heat. It's this sort of nice cool place and there's in water my mind, uh, and there's water. Yeah. In my mind that's kind of the picture okay. that I was imagining and yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd, yeah. The one that the forms are kind of interesting but the one that's uh, I find I, I'm not quite sure what it's doing. Is that is that balcony thing yeah. that's sticking out? You know, for and I find that kind of frustrating because it, was, it intrudes in the space and it doesn't. Uh, you know, I don't know what you feel okay, about it. Uh, the one that I would never before before the jump. I would never have thought ever to put anything like that because it just kind of looks weird in a way. You know, in, in a way. And uh, mm -hmm. no, but I, I built the junk model and I was completely <coughs> just going on form, and I tried. I, here, the first translation, yeah. I tried to get away from it, um, in a way, uh, did not, didn't like it, and for some reason I was just going to say, all right, I'm going to go with it and see what it does, and so I, I did, I would usually never do that, and so I just decided to. Well, it's to, just, I mean, you yeah. can do it, it's just I'm just uh, curious about the space and how it would be, and uh, how it relates to the other spaces. When I first saw this entrance over here, I thought, oh, wonderful, this, this building is really addressing you know, people coming from yeah. in any directions. But one thing that I'm finding about this, it seems to be the, the primary point of arrival. When you come into that space, that's like center, and that's a place of choice. One decides either from here to go to the theater, or go off in the garden, or start your procession up. It would have been very nice if this mm. path could have also brought us to a, a yeah. common point somewhere in the site so that everyone you know, there was a coherent place of arrival, such as what you seem to be seeking yeah. in that form. So I think if you could have brought us both of your, all, each of your forces coming um, to, to okay. that territory. And then it, yeah, I can see that kind of clash. Yeah. Like, I, I wasn't, yeah. yeah. The last uh, comment also <laughs> relates to the theater. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, anyway, at the moment. You said IMAX. Yeah. I think the scale of this is too small. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a small it's a much more intimate smaller space. I don't know how many people are in this theater, but it's not. Yeah, it's it's not like this 50. huge screen. It, it and it's can't not, hold you know, that much. So it's about something else. It could be almost a lecture hall where people are told more about butterflies and shown things, or it could be a movie about movies or s smaller things. And the shape of it is in, is nice and intriguing. I understand why you've done that and bring people around a corner. But when you're in that space. Think of how that movie screen actually plays out and where you sit and what you see. And you're sort of, you're feeling you're kind of slightly at an angle to everything, you know? All right. So there's something about, I think, the design of theaters and the way that they open into the front, whether it's a cinema or it's a, um, 
um, a movie, th I mean, a movie theater or an actual theater, that I think just the location of the sculptural form versus the actual how you inhabit the space.